is interconnected to Europe in many ways. And I thought it fit today to bring many of the leaders from our community here, folks from all walks of life, including our government.
relationship between law enforcement and our community. That's important that we do that in a systematic way. Not just in a field group way, but in a systematic way where people are able to speak their truth to law enforcement so they can understand. In addition to that, then we want to eliminate inequities in enforcement. And the primary source of inequity and injustice is racial profiling. So we want to end racial profiler, and there's a bill in the federal government going to that. We also want to talk about, about a little bit about criminal justice reform because it's all interconnected. And we want to take the profit incentive out of policing and incarceration. And this privatizing of jail is nothing more than the warehousing of thousands and thousands upon thousands of American men and women of color. And so when you create, when you privatize the prison system, you create an incentive for the pocket to line their pockets and overcrowd the jails with people. So we must oppose the privatization of the prison system. And we must end the mass incarceration of people and transition to restore justice. We also must account for past atrocities and injustice. And so there is a bill that calls for a commission to study the truth and develop reparations. That's why reparations
New York City has seen the unrest that he is seeing right now. The incident in that case involved a young man named James Hell. He was 15 years old. And on July 16th of 1964, he committed the heinous crime of opening up the fire hydrant so he and his friends could be in the water. A policeman, his name was Thomas Gilligan, a sergeant, chased him, shot him in the back, and as he died, the officer kicked the body over to see if he was still alive. And that ignited six days of unrest here in this community. Now, many around the country screamed about this incident and, and regaled and reviled the people of Harlem for their reaction. Here in this case, we have a similar situation. This time, people in all states are protesting, and we do condemn any violence against other people, the police, against property, looting, stealing, or hitting the police with a car or anything that's violent, we condemn it. But I'd like to turn the attention of those who are making all the critiques right now to the incidents where there was no violent protest. Never do they ever seem to listen, even if you come quietly, if you send suggestions, if you try to work with others. It's almost as if any attempt by the black and brown community to raise issues in this society are labeled outrageous or un-American. And so what I am saying is, I certainly hope that when people in Congress, people in the State Senate and the State Assembly see the legislation that has been proposed by other legislators and the manifesto, the manifesto of Congressman Espaillat, I haven't heard of a manifesto since Karl Marx. <laughs> so this is obviously very serious, and I made light of it for a moment, but in all seriousness, he covered what our voices have been saying for 56 years since the last time there was a terrible incident in this or other community. And I'm so happy to see the other leaders of Harlem here because I was on 125th Street Saturday and I saw a protest that was taken over by people who don't live in this community, don't speak to this community, and obviously don't care about this community. So I can't thank the congressman enough. I would speak longer. But if this mess chokes me any longer, I don't know if I'll leave here. Thank you. Give a round of applause. Woo! So, okay. we gave you the 10 points at the federal level, and you will find that online in my website as we begin to push Washington to go back to session and take on criminal justice reform and police reform. Because they're both growing at the hip. They're both interrelated. And whether it is Abner Luiba, Amadou Lialo, or Gardner, or Floyd, or Juan Rodriguez, who back in the 80s has just played, he played in his house. Rodney, who back?
to all of you. I thank you for coming here this afternoon at this press conference. I'm making this statement eight days after the Minnesota police murdered George Floyd in the middle of a global pandemic. Like a lot of you, I'm worried about what comes next. And here's a quote from Congress member John Lewis. My fellow Americans, this is a special moment in our history. Just as people of all faith and no faith, and all backgrounds, creeds, and colors branded together decades ago to fight for equality and justice in a peaceful, orderly, nonviolent fashion. We must do so again. That's his quote. But when many people express concern for safety, it is a veiled call for a return to the old, broken ways of law and order. What was acceptable nine days ago will never be accepted again. Yeah. 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 And when I say I'm concerned about people's safety, I mean just that. I am worried about people getting hurt physically, financially, emotionally, or worse. My daughter on Instagram showed me where people were protesting in a park. No police around, maybe they were a little further back. Got shot in the head with a rubber bullet. Yeah. And then the hospital yeah. almost died. Mm. Unacceptable yes. in yeah. our country. Yes. And we have a right to speak out yes. against police brutality yes. without fear yes. of being brutalized by tear gas, rubber bullets, billy club, gunshots. Speaking out is one of the most important ways to bring about change. And we're speaking out today, aren't we? Yes. We need to dismantle the systemic racism and white supremacy in our country. Yes. And it starts with each and every one of us. Whether you're black, white, Latino, Asian, yellow, green, or blue, whether you're rich or you're poor. If we are going to be the United States of America, we better start acting like it. Amen. There you go. And as a senator, I am part of the solution. As my colleagues right here are all part of the solution. As a voter, as an activist, and someone who voices matter in our community, you really matter in the process. And as a state legislature, I just got off, I told the Congress member that I was going to be on a Democratic conference when we spoke this morning. We were discussing six possible bills that deal with systemic racism and NYPD and all of the rights that we have as, as people of our city. One of the bills that's not on here, which we discussed two days ago, was 58. And I asked the question, where is 58? Yes. And they said, we discussed it two days ago. Mm -hmm. But I say, Zelnor Myrie spoke near the end, and he said he has a bill to move all police investigations and hearings out of NYPD yeah, yeah. and to the Appeals Bureau where all other uh, hearings are held. Man. You don't want it in the same place where they are working at, yeah. take it to an administrative tribunal. And I said, I support that bill also. Let's put it on the list. Yeah. So my brothers and sisters, my legislators, my congressmen, my former governor, I say the time is now we cannot wait. In unity, there is strength. Assalamu alaikum. We have three members uh, here from the state legislature, from the assembly, the lower house, that equally have uh, worked tirelessly to advance legislation. See, our young people should be able to 
No, immediately. 158 is. Our young people Release should be. Our young people should know immediately what 4408 is. Yep. The anti choco bill in Washington. Yes, yes, yes. Our young people, when they're marching in the street, they should know what are the resolutions that are being passed. Small business 
and minority businesses. I'm talking about black owned businesses. That's what I'm talking about. But that we're standing up together to say that we're going to work together. We're not going to allow any outsiders to dictate the agenda, the black agenda, the Black Lives Matter agenda. This is our agenda. Anybody's welcome to come in and join it. But it's going to be driven by us. It's going to be about us and not about some underlying cause. And let me warn you about one last thing. Let me just warn you about one last thing. Everything standing up before you black ain't black. And when you get a, a flyer that doesn't put their name, their address, their phone number, their anything on it, don't follow it because it could be a setup.
to focus on the issues of today and the issues of the future. You'll be hearing more about that. And I think it would be more appropriate with our distinguished elected officials to hear from them. So I thank you for your time. Thank you, Lord. because our communities are hurting. I have a six-year-old daughter. She's black. She's black. And last night, she asked me about the curfew. And I said to her, she said, why do we have to go home early? Why is there a curfew? And I had to remind her at six about her own mortality and the fact that she could face death on these streets. together. 
If you think we're the only ones that are move this narrative, you're wrong. It's going to take all of us and each one of you. What has been missing? What has been missing is a lack of accountability. You must hold us accountable, but we want to hold you accountable too. And when we walk out there, you're with us. When this guy walked up right now, brothers walked him right out. We got to call a state a state. We don't need police to police us if we love each other and police ourselves. And if you don't know what's going on, check your children and your grandchildren because they knew about this 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 thing that was on Saturday hours before I did. My daughter was in a whole different state. She said, Dad, are you going to the rally in Harlem? Eight o'clock in the morning. Baby, you out your mind. Ain't no Harlem rally. Because we think we know it all. That's right. You better understand there are two forms or three forms or four forms of communication going on. And if you're only on one, you're missing it. I was so irate that the governor and the mayor would say, we're going to do a curfew without bringing us to the table as stakeholders. Yeah. 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 In the name of God, you're going to do that. This is a police state? No. I came out here last night at 10.30. I stayed till 11.30. I want to thank Ashley Sharpton and members of men that showed up. You know what happens? When it gets dark at night, people want to run and hide. I refuse to hide. I would rather be dead in the grave than to say I'm elected and do nothing for you in my community. My conscience would not let me stay home. I never couldn't come out here. But I'm saying that there are enough of us around right here. If we come in peace, act in peace, behave in peace, we can demand what we want. Why are you here? On Saturday, they had no disrespect. They had all those white people on the peripheral. I walked through there, and you know what they were saying? We ain't come here for that. Give me this, give me that. What in the hell do you think they wanted? And the black people were in the middle. And then the cops were right there. So if they start throwing stuff, what's going to happen? I, listen, I just took y'all to church, and I might even going to ask for a <laughs> But I charge you. I charge you to support us. I charge you to hold us accountable. And every time you ask me what I'm doing, I'm going to ask you, what are you doing? How are we doing this together? Ain't no way in the world this, my councilman, my, my city woman, my city woman, my governor, my, my councilman, and my, my city woman, and my congressman. Where's the brother? Oh my God. Oh my God. Gail is everywhere. <laughs> Gail is everywhere. We can't, do, we can't do this. But I tell you what, anytime you find one of us there, you come. You come in peace and you come be prepared to shut that nonsense down. Come on. Children should be spoken to. They should know their place. And our young kids, they are looking for leadership. They are crying, asking who's going to lead us. Each one of you are leaders. Each one of you are leaders. What are you doing with what you have? Adam said, what's in your hand? You can shape the future right here. We're going to be here on Thursday at 3 o'clock. New York State legislators and those point fans. The senator put out there, we're going to bring him all the state officials, elected officials in 62 counties of New York are going to stand up at 3 o'clock across this great state and Harlem is one of those. Please join us, come in peace or stay home because we're going to shut that down.
as an ally and I hope all of you who are filming this got a good shot of Reverend Al Taylor and that you post that on social media. The world needs to see that speech. At this moment of outrage, of pain, of heartache, we need to say that words are not enough, rhetoric is not enough. We need action, we need policy change to stop the killing of black people at the hands of police. We need that change at every level, at the federal, the state, and the city level, and we need it now. And so thank you, Congress member, for giving us marching orders on specific policies that can help to save lives. And here at the city council, we are once and for all going to ban chokeholds. Years overdue and every maneuver that would asphyxiate yes. another human being will be outlawed and today standing with my colleagues in the black latino nation caucus and members of the congressional delegation including councilmember rodriguez our speaker johnson announced we're going to move that bill for a vote we're going to get a veto proof majority and we're going to pass it we need to make sure that there are consequences for police misconduct. Today, there are officers on the force who have committed fireable offenses, from lying under oath to assaulting suspects in custody. That is not acceptable. And so our colleague, Councilmember Donovan Richards, is putting forth a bill, intro 1309, that would establish clear punishment for police misconduct, they call it a matrix, and we're going to pass that too. We want consequences, clear consequences. And lastly, I'm going to say a word about the money. It is unconscionable that the current proposed budget of New York City has a 32% cut in the Department of Youth and Community Development, while a $6 billion police budget is intact. That's unconscionable. We have eliminated the entire summer youth employment program in the current budget while there are virtually no cuts to the NYPD. That is unacceptable. We are going to fix this. We're going to fight for rational, fair cuts in our budget that fix this inequality to invest in young people and health care and education. That's the way you keep this city safe. So stay tuned, we're gonna to fight together to make this real policy change as part of the Harlem Manifesto. And now, my colleague, Idanis Rodriguez. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Amy, all my colleagues. I'm so glad I had the opportunity to be here many times since I arrived in 1983 with a lot of, a lot of uh, lecturing from the Lumber Bar taking classes with Professor Jeffrey, you know, knowing that we are all one family together. This is not about race, this is about policy. This is about what has happened to America. Well, we have built this America based on a systematic racist society. We have been a white male control society. Now you think about when this nation got the independence. First of all, it wasn't a white male. 
men the one that had, that had the right to vote. Black were not allowed to vote. You know, women were not allowed to vote. And then you name it, immigrants. You name it like LGBTQ. You name it, women rights. So, you know, we fucking tired. children grandchildren that we will not have another Leona Bumper, that we will not have another Ryan King Lion and, 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 and George and Floyd. This George Floyd can be my son tomorrow. There's gonna be another George Floyd this coming year. Yeah. Yes, there is, yeah. Because the system that we have built is racist. Yes. And they believe that black and Latino are third class citizens. They deny our children the right to have a quality education. They did have a senior citizen to have the services that they had the right to for everything that they had done it. So, Congressman, your voice, Governor Patterson, we also know you were there, and especially those of all the black and Latino elected officials. Sometimes we are not allowed to get to move our agenda at fully 100% as we want. Because this is a white male society that has to be changed. Just for George Floyd. Yes. But this is more than George Floyd. Yes. We are against violence. But even those people committing violence, they've been in Iraqi society. They've been in the prison system. They've been treated as animals. Yes. So let's call it what it is. And probably this movie has been infiltrated by the law enforcement. Because now the media wants to be talking about, yeah, that small percentage of people doing violence in Harlem, doing violence in foreign. They don't represent the majority. I was walking with Nick and Jomani William at two in the morning doing the Occupy Wall Street. Yep. I had the right, the protected shoe had the right to walk at one in the morning to block the Lincoln Tunnel, to block the crossroads. If it's done, if it's done in a peaceful and organized panel, stop the curfew. Just for your Floyd, let's bring money in the anti-poverty initiative in the city and state the national level. That's what we need. Thank you, council member. I want to thank you all for going up. This is this is a fight, not just a one day. It's every single day. Every day you wake up in the morning, every day you, when you go to sleep, this is 24-7. This got to stop now. We got to stop this, this uh, violence being perpetrated against us, continuing to move forward. We got to stop it dead on its track. And let me say something about funding. As we fight to get more funding in, in, for New York State and New York City from the federal government, just like the leaders of the state said that New York needs more funding than the rest of the states, and I agree with that. Our communities need to get that funding disproportionately too. 
address the issues and what's happening throughout our city and throughout our country. Give them a hand clap, y'all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you to the sisters. This is a real good looking hall right now. They're not out here for a form of fashion for you to look at them, but they out here because they care and they saying enough is enough. And that's what these young people are saying. Enough is enough. And yes, they are expressing it in the wrong way. Some of them. Some are protesting and, and, and going out peacefully. They're not out here to loot and, and, and tear up places. We got some bad apples, but we're still going to pray for them as well. Because we don't want to give up on nobody. But I thank the elected officials for touching on policies today. Yes. To letting us all know that you know what I'm saying? You're not alone. We do care for you. So thank you to each and every one of y'all. Could you make me feel good today? Because sometimes I second guess whether you care or not. And I know you do. Because you're here today letting us know. So let's pray for what's going on in this country. We ain't going to be long with the prayer, but we just want to pray in closing for this country right now that is hurting right now. Can you, can you bow your heads with me? Father, yeah, all the clergies that's here, we thank the, all the clergies come, come around and we can all touch and agree. Father, we bless you and we thank you, Lord God. Lord, we thank you because you are a faithful God. You are a caring God and you are a forgiving God. Lord, you are a loving God. You loved us so much that you gave your only son, Jesus, that we all would have life and have it more abundantly. Lord, we thank you for your presence. You said we're two or three gathered together that you are in the midst. So we know your spirit is here in this circle. Let that spirit touch each and every person in this country that is protesting and hurting and crying out for change. Lord, you know where their hearts is at. But Lord God, we ask you to put peace in this country put peace in every community throughout the city, Lord God, and throughout our states, Lord God. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for the elected officials that came out today. You know them all by name. Bless them in mind and body and spirit and soul. Make them all have more faith in your divine godness. Protect them always. Keep them healthy and strong. But Lord God, we pray for George Floyd and his family, Lord God. Lord, they are hurting. Lord, they are hurting because we all saw on the video yes. and Lord God we constantly see the video and we all saying enough is enough yeah. so Lord we pray right now Lord God that you will heal every heart in America Lord God every heart even those that's not protesting those that's in their homes that's crying all the people that saying why something like this can happen on national TV when change gonna come Lord God but Lord God, we know that you are the change of life. But we all going to decrease. But we're going to allow you to increase. None of us, but all of you, you have your way in this situation. Lord, we ask you to heal America. 
in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. 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 Clap it up, Lord. Come on, give us a good in there. Clap it up. Thank you so much. Be safe, stay safe, and keep the faith. Thank you.